Hi guys, welcome back to the vlog. Now, I'd started making a vlog yesterday. Uh, went to do part two of the filming, and we've got some new products here that I want to talk to you guys about. You've got many questions on, especially the grenades. Um, and then as I was doing it, the, the camera completely crapped out on me, so... Uh, it was actually just a flat battery, but for some reason it wouldn't charge uh, when it was put on for like well over an hour. But uh, let's get straight back to it now. These are the new products from Laser LED. We've got all the models in stock. Um, all the colours and the models of these in stock. I mean, I've a few out for you here so you can see. So what it is, it's a attachment for the end of your gun which gives you a 300 lumen torch, a laser and a navigation light as well which you can change the colour on. We've got the uh, versions here which is the smaller batteries. They actually have like a clamping system so it can go onto any barrel, any cylindrical type part of your gun uh, and it comes with like little adapters so you can screw it down even more and, and vice versa so you've got them in black and in tan they come with pressure pads they come with batteries they come with a charger they also come with a little piece here so you can fix like a front sight if you want to put it on the front of your barrel but it's blocking your uh, iron sights you've got them in black and in tan and then we've got the uh, the slightly uh, bigger more expensive versions so this is basically the same unit the unit itself is smaller, but it's attached using a 40mm counterclockwise adapter. So this goes onto your barrel, and then this fits onto the adapter. It's smaller in profile to the other two, but it doesn't house any batteries, and the way it fixes on is a little bit, uh, a little bit better. But these versions come with a vertical foregrip with all the buttons on instead of the uh, pressure pad there. So you've got the adapter, you've got the the unit itself, you've got the front sight as well as the other one if you want to put that on there. But then you've got a vert grip which houses an 18650 battery. Uh, it's got a little rail section on there as well which is pr pretty cool. And you've got three buttons to control it. Now all the models come with batteries, all the models come with chargers as well. So it has everything that you need in the kit to get started. Uh, they also come in this cool uh, hard case as well. Uh, so I've got a battery in this one, let's see if we can get it. This is where the camera crapped out yesterday. So we push the top one and it's a torch. Press it again and it goes off. Press, press. If you double tap this, does it in strobe and then you single press, we'll turn it on and off. We've got a laser, which you'll see the little dot there. Let me uh, try and point it at something. It's a bit hard when you've got a camera in your hands. So you'll see it on the wall over there. So it's a it's a push, and as soon as you release it, the laser goes off. But if you double tap it, now it's falling off. So it's on the wall over there. Double tap it, and then what it will do is it will stay on. So it's on the wall over there. Double tap it, it'll stay on. And then we press it again, it'll go off, on, off, double tap it again, and it's onto pressure, push and release. And then the third button, which is the bottom one here, turns on a little navigation light. So if you're walking around dark rooms, you don't want to use your torch, but you want to see where you're stepping and other bits like that, or map reading if you're on Milsims. It's got a uh, little uh, light on the bottom there. Double tap it, goes to red, double tap it, goes to green, double tap it, goes to blue, back to white. So superb little pieces of kit these will be put on the website today like I said we've got all colours of the two different models um, one comes with a vert grip one comes with a pressure pad uh, these uh, have a good ability to li literally pretty much go on any type of barrel whether you want to put it on like a shotgun or anything like that it will f if it will go into that little hole there it will fit which is good these are limited to 14 mil counterclockwise but they do come with bigger batteries and they come with a vertical foregrip as well, which houses all the buttons and bits and pieces like that. And you haven't got such a bulky piece of uh, plastic on the front of the gun. So those are pretty cool. Those will be on the website today at some point. Just got to sort the images out and the pricing. But like I say, they all come in uh, some pretty cool uh, hard cases, which is nice. brings me to my point on the next product I want to show you guys. I'd also like to thank all those that have pre-ordered our short striker outer barrel. Pre-orders are now up to about 50%. Uh, 
Uh, we have hoarded, hoarded a fair few of the barrels uh, and we are looking for people to wholesale it as well. So if you'd like to stock our short striker barrel, um, please let me know. Um, now the plus side about the short striker outer barrel which I was explaining to someone on the phone yesterday is we do a dual ball barrel. The dual ball barrel is very good but the dual ball barrel has a, 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 a specific purpose. It's meant for the striker because the striker has less cylinder air volume so we had all these people saying that the gun was flawed blah blah blah. Dual ball barrel helps with your dual loss in such a long barrel at 550mm. So people are getting great results out of it because they're getting less of a dual loss out of a long barrel using heavy BBs like 0.4s, 0.36s, 0.4s and above. So the dual barrel is great. Now the short outer barrel for the striker is another way of getting around that issue. It does a few things which is why we're doing it. It shortens the rifle which makes it easier to carry because a fully spec'd out striker is quite a long rifle and if you, you know, walking around in the in the bushes and stuff like that and you're getting it tangled and stuff like, or you're doing CQB and it's harder to get in and out doorways and windows shortens the profile of the gun it's CNC machined out of aluminium it's hard anodized in matte black so it's the the production and the finishing quality compared to the standard barrel is going to be absolutely tenfold uh, compared to the barrel that you'll take off your striker uh, the short outer barrel allows you to use uh, like a 303, 300 or so, 303mm uh, length barrel, like a G-spec barrel, which is perfect because then you, you, you're taking the barrel length right down. So it's, let's say, for instance, you put a short outer barrel on the, on the gun, you put a 303 G-spec length barrel in there. You haven't got the drawback of the jewels then because... It's basically, in essence, doing what the jewel barrel does, but the jewel barrel is having to bridge a 550 mil gap. So, you you put your heavy BBs are going to speed up down this short barrel, but then once they get to the end of the short barrel, they're not going to be uh, drawn back, or you're not going to get any jewel loss because the barrel finish is quite short. The one thing this may do is it may mean your power drops down a little bit. But it's not a problem because of the amount of springs available for this thing, AG springs you can get, bearing spring guides, the amount of adjustability and upgrades you can get for this thing now. The Striker Mancraft kits, which I'm hoping will land today because we've ordered them like over a month ago, still not here. Um, so in essence, you could get the short outer barrel and a very decent inner barrel for less than what the jaw bore would cost you. Which is good because it's saving money, it's shortening the length of the, the, the profile of the gun which makes it a lot easier and it's threaded to 14mm counterclockwise so any of your airsoft accessories that are threaded to 14mm counterclockwise will fit straight into the gun. You haven't got to go any airy specific parts, you haven't got to go buy the flash hiders or the suppressors. You can put on there whatever you want and the amount of accessories available on the market for um, airsoft 14mm counterclockwise threads is absolutely phenomenal. So that's good as well. Um, so yeah, you can you can do it for much less than what a jewel barrel would cost you. Jewel barrels are good, but they cost us a lot. There's not when you run the business, you have to have certain margins in certain products. And the jewel barrels, you think they were, were expensive at 120 pound, but we had so little in those barrels um, just because they were so expensive to make. And then once they come over from the Philippines, you got to add your imports and your vat and your other bits and pieces. It's really expensive. Um, so that's another way around. It's made in the UK as well. We'll also be making our own inner barrels at some point. We'll be doing stuff for AEGs. We'll be doing stuff for uh, strikers and VSRs. We'll be doing them for gas blowback pistols. You name it, we'll be doing it. And these barrels will be made in the UK as well. And they'll be made to such a high specification um, that it'll be, you know, they're going to be absolutely brilliant barrels. If, if you speak to anyone that knows their stuff on barrels, they'll always tell you you've got all these different manufacturers and all these different ways of doing it, but as long as that barrel's high quality and the same diameter all the way down, you know, you're on to a winner. So let me pop this camera up because do we need to go a little bit higher. Mm. Using my uh, pikey tower here. So, 
these ADG spring grenades. A lot of questions about these. A lot of speculation that they're made cheaper and they're going to break. Uh, I've thrown one of these like a hundred times yesterday, tested it. Uh, nothing's broke. And I'm just going to take you through the procedure to arm it as well. Because people say it looks very difficult to arm. Now all you do is you squeeze the grenade down. And as you squeeze it, you want to turn the top plastic piece. I'm just going to have to do these off camera while I need to put some pressure on it. So, this piece here, you push this down, this goes down, this turns all the way around. Eventually it lines up to a push the pin in. So you push the pin in and then put in your safety pin. And then just here, on the opposite side, is where you can mount like a cap, like the little red ones that you used to have in the old little cap guns as you probably had when you were a kid. You can put them on there, it slams that against the other part of the grenade, which makes the grenade louder. So when you throw it in a room, it'll be a bit of a bang but it'll also throw BBs in like multiple directions. So, once you've done that, next part to do is you push these levers down like that. You go around, push the lever down, that's one, push the lever down. So all the levers are pushed down, how easy was that? Then all you need to do is close the doors. We are, we're not loading anything into this just yet. Sometimes the doors do get a little bit. Done. Simple as that. Now it's ready to throw. Uh, obviously before you want to throw it, you want to load it with BBs. So there's three holes in the bottom here, which you use a speed loader just to fill them up. I think you put about 144 BBs in there, but we'll come back to when we're throwing this and we'll try and do some slow-mo.